America is suffering. I was going to upload a different video this weekend, but it no longer felt appropriate. It points at an issue that, in the wake of George Floyd's death and the incredible protests that are going on, absolutely pales in comparison. So I'll be uploading that next weekend. I want to talk about this instead, but before I do, uh, I want to ask you a favor. Regardless of your opinion on the rioting or ACAB or all the spicy discourse that's been floating around, I think that we can all agree that George Floyd did not deserve to die. We can agree that criminal justice reform is needed and that America is sick. So I'm asking you to please donate to charities like the Minnesota Freedom Fund and Reclaim the Block, charity whose proceeds go to helping disadvantaged communities in the Minneapolis area. And I'll provide links in the description below to charities like the ones I named that you can donate to. Even, even so much as one dollar can make a difference. So I implore you to do that. Even so much as a dollar can make an impact. If you get anything out of this video, it's to please donate. Do what you think you can to help those in need. What is a rebel? A person who says no, but whose refusal is not a renunciation. They are also someone who says yes from the moment of their first gesture of rebellion. The words of the premier philosopher on what it means to revolt Albert Camus ring ineffably true. What we see on the streets are not rioters or agitators, they're human. And they're doing perhaps the most human thing that they can do, shouting a conscious yes and no. They shout no to the forces that abuse them, neglect them, and would treat them more like a problem to be dealt with than people to care for. And they shout yes to the affirmation of their dignity, their worth. Theirs is an exaltation of presence. We are here. I am a white cis male. While I am neither straight nor neurotypical, I am very privileged. The police make me nervous. And I know that that feeling is magnitude stronger in those of color for whom the police represent a very real danger. I don't know what it is like to be a person of color. While I can, with some amount of humility and insight, perhaps observe some of the unique injustices that they deal with, I will never know their qualia, their lived experience. But what is universal is suffering. In Martin Luther King's words, injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. We are caught in an inescapable network of mutuality, tied in a single garment of destiny. Whatever affects one affects all indirectly. While some white people would like to believe themselves immune amidst their comfortability from the injustice of George Floyd's death, the reality is we are not. Our communities are made worse because our peers of color do not feel safe. When I see the faces of George Floyd or Eric Garner, I am privileged not to see my own, but I cannot say the same for my cousins whose safety I cannot as readily assure as my own. Philosopher Franz Fanon wrote of his experience as a black protester, when we revolt, it's not for a particular culture. We revolt simply because for many reasons, we can no longer breathe. Those last few words, coincidentally paraphrasing the last spoken by Garner and Floyd. If you've watched this far, it's because I assume that you care about what I have to say. So I'm going to be very explicit about what I'm going to say next. Condemning, tone policing, the protesters, is stupid. Rioting is ugly, yet it does not match the standards of ugliness established by that which it opposes. Police violence, systemic discrimination, there is your ugliness. Martin Luther King called rioting the language of the unheard for a very good reason. The unheard will not allow themselves to be pushed further and further into some self-abased suicidality. There really is a point where enough is enough. Where ugliness from the powers that be really do necessitate some ugliness in response. To quote Camus again, something I'll be doing quite often in this video, the spirit of rebellion 
can only exist in a society where a theoretical equality conceals great factual inequalities. If ugliness is being combated by ugliness, then you may ask, why aren't we condemning them both? An eye for an eye makes the whole world blind. But you are already blind if you believe that the police and the rioters are comparable. Because there is a paradoxical beauty found in the ugliness of rioting. The same paradox found in the very nature of rebellion itself. And whereas the police wish to deaden and silence the voices of the oppressed, the rebels riot to defend their humanity. To quote Camus again, Analysis of rebellion leads to the suspicion that, contrary to the postulates of contemporary thought, a human nature does exist. Why rebel if there is nothing permanent in oneself worth preserving? Rebellion, though apparently negative since it creates nothing, is profoundly positive since it reveals the part of man which must always be defended. To impugn the protesters is to condemn the chemo without concern for the cancer. The protesters are merely a reaction to a symptom of the disease. Police brutality is the symptom, and racism, authoritarianism, and a broken criminal justice system are the disease. If you've watched this far, I want to thank you. Again, I ask that you please donate to the Minnesota Freedom Fund, or Reclaim the Block, or any other charity that promotes racial and socioeconomic justice. Even so much as a dollar can make a massive difference. This isn't a long video. It wasn't meant to be. But I'll leave you with two gems from Fanon and Camus each. The black person enslaved by their inferiority, and the white person enslaved by their superiority alike behave in accordance with a neurotic orientation. The only way to deal with an unfree world is to become so radically free that your very existence is an act of rebellion. Please, protest.